All right, we got GoPro edge. Been a minute. Been a minute. Are you clean? Can you see me? Are we in the right settings? Am I in there? Okay. What in the heck are we doing today? Woo! 69. Bronco, that is. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to take a minute and show you something I found on this because I've been beating my head on the wall for a little bit trying to figure out why our brakes aren't working right in this thing. So when we got this thing in, it all had an all new brake system in it. Um, but when you stepped on the brakes, it would, it like, ah! like real hard, just jack with you. I'm like, what the hell? So we went through this, the brake systems and adjusted all of it. It's got discs in, the, discs in the front and drums in the rear. So we adjusted the drums, put new wheel cylinders in it, new lines, bled the system out, did all, all that good junk. And then, uh, I had to go through this thing. The client wants to drive it um, this summer. I'm probably not going to be able to get my hands on it till midsummer, maybe end of summer. So he's going to take it for the meantime and enjoy his truck. And then when I get his slot ready, he's going to bring it back. So <clears throat> BNC wanted to drive it um, and it's been out here for a while. I know there were some things that we took apart. Um, I wasn't sure where exactly my mechanic left off on all the previous stuff, being it got kicked to the back burner for body and paint. And it hadn't been driven, so I wanted to make sure that it actually drives nice and that everything works and everything that we did, we did right. Um, so got all the dash wiring taken care of, got all the engine compartment stuff done. Um, so I went through and um, I re-ran the electrical pigtail in the engine compartment. So you can kind of see down here, it runs down to the oil pressure sending unit, the temp sender, the coil. And also we ran a wire for electric choke that's back in here in our pigtail. So I ran all that stuff, uh, fixed the bracketry, um, finished the heater box, fixed the wiring in the dash, addressed all the wiring down here, diagnosed the fuel sending unit, yada, yada, yada. So went out, we we're taking test driving the brakes and um, it was working good. What it was like, you would step on it and it would stop real good and then you would release off the brakes and it would be like uh, and then kind of go and then you step on the brakes and it a little bit and then it would kind of release and then every once in a while when you stab them real hard and it wouldn't release at all it just stuck 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 so um there's a few adjustment procedures there's a rod in here and behind the master cylinder that when you assemble this this is all aftermarket brakes when you put this together you're there's a adjustment procedure for that rod that's the telltale one that everybody says if the brakes are hanging up, that's where your issue is. Um, it's a vacuum booster, which is not here from the factory, so we could have had an issue there. Diagnosed it, it's fine. Diagnosed this, pulled it apart, the rods adjusted right, all that stuff's fine. Uh, jacked up the wheels and tires. These ones were free. These ones were both locked solid on both sides, both front brakes were. So our issues up here, our issues either this not releasing or something binding up in here. So I went ahead and I took off this brake earlier and was trying to figure out what the heck was going on. And I noticed right away inside the caliper, and I just did this last week on the Corvette. You guys, if Isaac's watching, he'll probably laugh at this one, but there's no stainless sliders down here in the bottom of this caliper. Now some take them and some don't because of the design and, and the, the whatever, because of the design of these things. Some of them take them and some of them don't. So the way this one's supposed to work is here's my pad. And I noticed when I took my pad off that it's got a lip to it right here. And I've never seen a brake pad or a shoe or anything have a lip right here. So that means that it was riding on the edge of this rotor and not quite seating. Yeah, see how it catches? It wasn't quite seating all the way down against the rotor. So I'm kind of like, uh, why would that be? And so, you know, you've got your little centering clip here, but it doesn't have sliders to run on. It's got a little piece of stainless here. And it's got a little piece of stainless here. Um, but when you put this thing in here, it looked all happy. Well. got to looking at 
some pictures and videos trying to figure out why those things would be binding up and I'll take this one off and show you but before I do I want to show you if you can kind of see in here so if you look um, <laughs> so if you see how this front pad has got a hole in it that this is the slider bar that the pads are supposed to ride on that keeps this the, the pad center well the back one doesn't have a hole it just has a notch in it and so I got to kind of look in and if you can see that rear pad is not sitting on that bar like it's supposed to it's kicked back it's kicked back this direction and I'll show you why in just a minute okay oh, I gotta get these out This brakes, they still use the same caliper and backing plate design on all the new cars that they build. Even my new 2022 Subaru that's coming, it's got the same style brakes. Oh, you know, it's kind of one of those, if it's not broke, don't fix it. This stuff works. And because of that, they're pretty idiot proof. I mean, it's pretty hard to get a disc brake system wrong I mean if it goes and goes together and you get the bolts in it most of the time generally speaking you've done it right but there are a couple of key things and in your brake pads and in your calipers that have a little tiny instruction manual I know I know no 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 good thing instruction for no good thing this brakes been around 100 years well if I finish getting this off, I will show you. Okay. All right. Now this should come right out, right? light back in here so I can kind of explain a little bit oh, hello. I found what's wrong with the Bronco brakes oh that's good they didn't feel right at all yeah you want to film for me I'm filming actually you can hold this a little help Tess is here so she can film and I'll show you guys what happened I need to grab my screwdriver stand over here Bill. you're gonna film right here I'm gonna take this this shit off. It's lovely to work. It's just fine. Mm -hmm. I just I wanted to no, do this fine. because uh, <laughs> you're fine. You fix it really fast, but I wanted to show people. So this is the front the front pad that goes on the front, and like I was saying, this has got that hole in it to where this sucker comes through like this. And it's got these notches here. See, I can't even get put this together unless it goes in right. So that's supposed to sit in there, and then this comes through. And then that pin is what this center centers this up on and won't let this thing move. Well, if you come back down right here, look right here, Bo. You can see with this setup, you see I've got a gap in that pad right there. Well, I also noticed when I took the other side apart, let me take this pad out this rod see it won't come out without that so take that out and then I was looking at this and I was pulling on this pad because this one's got to move with this piston when you step on the brake this piston pushes on this pad and that's what clamps against the rotor so mm -hmm. this pad right here has got to be able to move it's got to slide back and forth and like I was saying about the other side when you look down in here there's no stainless slider here now normally that stainless slider is so you don't have steel on steel the stainless is harder which is actually creates a lubrication surface so i'm trying to pull this one out oh, and i can't it's rubbing down here and the part that i wanted to show you just popped off of here here's the critical part this tiny little clip now I know I said something about the instruction manual. I know, I know, I know. But look at this clip. So this clip can go on in either orientation. It can go on with this orientation 
or it can go on at this orientation. This right here, this little tooth, is a spring-loaded tooth to push this pad up or to push this pad down. And in this instance, whoever put this, whoever put this brake system together installed this brake system with that spring-loaded part of this pad pushing this pad down away from the riding surface, away from the pin, forcing the back side of the pad to rub down here. And you can actually see, get in here close, boom. You see that little rub mark right there? And you can see the little rub mark over here? It's because the pad was thrown down too far. Now let me watch, watch what happens when I change this. Go right here, boom. And this is actually a little bit bent because it wasn't in there, right? So this pad, nothing wrong with the pad, nothing wrong with the system, nothing wrong with anything. It's supposed to sit down in here. Take this one off. Flip it 180 degrees. Put this back in here. And when we put this in here, it's gonna ride on the bottom of this, this cylinder that pushes it out, but it's gonna force it up. When we put this in, oh, see, we need to make sure that stays in place critical so I'm gonna have to fix that clip now see when it's in there it's being pushed all the way up away from it I mean I got I can almost stick my finger in there I'm not spring loaded up oh, away from it yeah so yeah so see how it's now when I put this pin back in oh right that makes sense. Yeah, and then I let go of the pad. Now look at the pad. See where the pad rides now? The pad rides on the pin. And the pin and the spring is what keeps it into place. Tiny, tiny, tiny installation procedure error on an entirely brand new restoration that somebody put this whole brake system together. And it's that critical. Do you think the other brakes like that too? I already fixed it, but yeah, the other front oh, one, they were both locked up. Yep. So this is, I mean, I guess more than anything, um, that's like a, you really got to, I mean, thank you guys for bringing, you know, Jacob, thank you for bringing this to me because I mean, I'll be honest, I got no wool. I even put my mechanic on it that I, that I would trust. And he went through the whole thing and wasn't able to find this, you know? And so we really, do your research and make sure you guys are taking these rigs to somebody that you can trust that has got the wisdom and the care to, to take the time to actually try to figure it out right, you know? I mean, there this was so stupid and I've got, you know, three days, not like whole days, but like, you know, I dicked with it one day and then I couldn't figure it out. And then the next day I took some more stuff apart and fixed some stuff I thought was wrong and still didn't fix it. So then the third day I'm like, ah, I gotta dig down further. And then I dig down further and here's where we are. Just this simple, one little clip and make these brakes work like a brand new Which truck. Like almost anybody can make almost that anybody mistake. can make that mistake, but that unless you like specifically you read that, that little tiny instruction brakes. manual, that little piece of paper that comes with the brake pads. When you go to put this thing together, read that fucker line by line because it's liable to tell you the orientation of this clip. And in this instance, not in many, but in this instance, the orientation of this little spring loaded clip is all the difference in the world of whether your brake is gonna stay or whether your brake's just gonna float and ride like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna put all this junk back together. I might knock off this lip or I might just let the brakes do itself, but I guarantee you it's not gonna catch anymore. So thanks for watching guys. Appreciate you.